I'm going to show you how I get the data into shape from what's supplied from our analytical team. So Mike Smirk has sent me this spreadsheet from the ICP results and we need to do a number of things before we can start doing some data analysis on it in R. So I've provided you with the fixed up version already and that's attached to the assignment, the short report three, but what I didn't show you is how to clean it up first. So we're going to go through that. So the, here is uh, our information here, uh, and we've got a number of things that won't work very well in R. For example, we've got uh, multiple rows of column headings. The data includes the blank uh, and so on. So uh, there are a number of negative numbers and, and we need to figure out how to fix all this up. So the, what I'm going to do first is actually calculate uh, detection limits. And the way that we do that is to pop in a formula here. So I'm going to calculate the sample standard deviation of our blank values. And just, I'm going to select multiple blank values here just by holding them down the control key with each one. All right, so every group more or less has got a blank value and there's the formula for our standard deviation and conventionally we multiply that standard deviation by three and that gives us our lower limit of detection for that particular element. All right. Um, now, what I'm also going to do, uh, make this a little bit easier, is to make those the row numbers absolute, put the dollar signs before them. And that just, so this is my lower detection limit. And I'm also going to calculate a mean blank value, and I'm going to use these data later on. Okay. So the function for calculating a mean in Excel is called average, which is frustrating. Should be mean, but there we go. Okay, so I'm going to copy those across now. So I'll get a different lower limit of detection for different elements. So for example, for sodium, it's in the part per million range, but for many other elements, it's in the part per billion range. But remember that we need to deal with the blanks as well. Okay, so what I've found easiest, and I'll just uh, change the zoom a little bit here to make life easier for me, is to create another sheet, and then I'm going to copy through um, everything from here, except those cells that I just created at the bottom. I'm just going to paste them as values here, and then I'm actually going to get rid of a few things. I'm going to get rid of those two rows, and I actually don't want that data in there as numbers, not yet anyway. Okay, so um, for silver, I'm going to say if our value is less than the lower limit of detection, and let's make that fix that cell in place, then we'll make that NA, right? But if not, let's just keep it at 
the value it is for now. Right. This is the first step. So what I'm do basically doing is censoring the values and saying that anything below the detection limit is going to be a missing value. Right. So, and I can then copy that down. Looks like everything for silver is going to be missing. And that's fine. Um, and just to make life easier for myself, I'm going to freeze the top row like that. And I'm going to select all those values. And I should just now be able to copy that across. Right. And you can see that we've got a bunch of missing values in there, but not everything. Okay. What we should expect to see is that the blanks are all, or at least mostly, missing values okay. below detection. They're not always, but we're going to fix that up anyway. All right. So we've. This is. It's good to keep track of what we're doing. Censored by low detection limit. And I'm going to actually make another sheet, which I'm going to call blank subtracted. This will be our final sheet. All right. So we'll copy all of those. And again, just paste them as values. We'll get rid of everything there. Okay. So now I'm going to say if I need to go and find it again. This is going to look a little bit weird if that minus. blank. Let's fix that in place. Is less than zero. If so, if the value is less than the blank, because we need to subtract the blank, um, then make that not available. But if it's not less than zero, we'll just use that formula. Okay, now what we see is that's given an error message, so we need some sort of error trapping in here. And I'm going to use the Excel function if error. So if that whole thing gives us an error, then we'll make it NA. All right, so that accounts for every possibility. And we copy that down. As we expected, we got everything NA for silver. Let's freeze our panes again, select all those, and drag that across. Right? Okay, so there are our numbers. Okay. Now, we've still got formulas in here, right? And we've still got the blanks, which we don't really want in our spreadsheet. So I'm quite careful about this, I guess. What I usually do is copy the whole thing and add another, another sheet. Make that data only. Paste it in as values and then just go through. Uh, and find the blank. If you want to make sure you get them all, you can use something like conditional formatting. It's not a bad idea to know how to do this. Okay, so if anything contains blank, I'm going to delete it. And then Just about there. Last 
one. Okay, so we've got some data. What I actually did um, for the worksheet that you have got is that I've put another couple of columns in here. And one is group and one is sample. Right. So so on. Okay, so and so on, right? Okay, so we save that and let's go to our studio and read it in. So that would put the contents of the clipboard into a data object called Ashfield Water, for want of a better name. So I selected the whole lot, Control C to copy. Let's see, it's got the moving caterpillars around the outside, and then hit this. All right, and there's Ashfield Water in. So we, what we need to do there is, as well as specify the clipboard, we need to say that the separator is a tab. That's how it comes out of the the clipboard if you copy from Excel and header equals true, meaning the first row is our column headings. And we're all done.